As we live our lives in this world, we are faced with debates, arguments and deliberations on various things. Sometimes very present, sometimes unpleasant, sometimes on issues, sometimes on trivial matters. Many times during these debates and discussions, we find that logical arguments are made, rational arguments are made, but many other times there are illogical arguments, emotional arguments which do not have any basis and that leads to chaos, that leads to disorder. Opponents of uh, these kind of uh, illogical or emotional debates say that it leads to better humankind. But wise people will have to uh, understand what is an illogical argument, how to avoid them, how to defend when an illogical argument is made. Encyclopedia Britannica says that what is a logical argument is predicated on what is rational and what is intelligible. If human beings can understand it, appreciate it and internalize it, probably it is a logical argument. However, if there is a break somewhere of the reasoning, break somewhere of the basis, then it is an illogical argument. In this small format of a video of about five to seven minutes, it's very difficult to uh, completely discuss all the uh, arguments regarding fallacious arguments. So I'll give five or six important examples and rest of it I think you can always explore a topic which is illogical debates and discussions and how to face them. The first example that comes to my mind is the fallacy of uh, slippery slope. There are people who will say that if this happens then the next one will happen, the next, the next one will happen then the next one will happen. Remember when uh, co-education came in, when girls and boys were not segregated into different classes or different rows, the conservatives first told, oh, first the girls and boys will sit together, then they will start kissing in the class, then they will hug each other, then they may have sex in the class. So this is called the slippery slope argument. And the most common defense or the logic that must be given as a counter to this is that most probably it will stop after the first one itself. History shows that it doesn't go beyond that. The second one is known as the perfectionist fallacy. Now we are seeing uh, the uh, COVID vaccination going on. But still, you know, there are so many rural areas which is not vaccinated. The people in America itself are telling that vaccines cause uh, Powell syndrome or vaccines cause stunted growth. So what will happen? People are still dying even after having vaccines. So this is called a perfectionist fallacy, which ignores the majority evidence or the documented evidence that there is a preponderance of vaccines defending against the disease called Corona. So this perfectionist fallacy has to be defended by saying that we are living in an imperfect world we are looking at optimization, we are looking at achievability, we are not looking at absolute goodness. The third illogical argument is called the monster association fallacy. The commonly quoted example is that Hitler was a vegetarian, so most of the vegetarians suppress their uh, fascist tendency and inside of it vegetarians are generally fascist. Somebody bad has done something, so it must be a bad thing. No data is relied upon, it becomes very illogical. Now the defense to this is that yes, Hitler also believed that the earth uh, moved around the sun. So he also believed in scientific preparedness of the uh, military. He also believed that advanced planning of the airplanes could uh, make Germany a superior power. The next important fallacy that all of us must be aware is called the circular argument fallacy or the fallacy of uh, binaries. Sometimes let us say there is a question that uh, tell me whether you have stopped beating your wife. Tell me yes or no. Now this argument has many problems with the question itself. I may not have a wife at all. I may not be married or I wouldn't have beaten my wife at all. So that means there is no question of stopping beating my wife. All the bachelors could be either unmarried or married. He is a binary which is fallacious by itself. I may be a child, so the question of bachelorhood is a relevant question. I may be a monk, 
and monks do not marry at all. Or defense to this kind of argument is that question must be moved. The question per se must be questioned. The next one is called sequestrial fallacy. Something irrelevant suddenly comes in. The emotion has gone to such a level that this fallacious agreement, let us say we are discussing about the uh, education system. Somebody brings an argument saying that because the people have become all very religious, the education system has gone to dogs. This is a place where you need to withdraw. Gently point out that this is a fallacious agreement. This is an agreement bringing arguments from a completely unrelated and completely unreasonable field. Whoever is proposing this fallacious argument comes back to reason. The next one is, if part is true, the whole must be true. I'll give a famous example. Islamic believing in a life after death where if you have done a few good works is called jihad or cause of a truth one of the nobler things that is prescribed in Islam then you will be going to Jannat we say that all Islam is full of jihadists so this fallacy comes in when part is equated to the whole the defense of it is generally given as a haystack example haystack may be very heavy but the individual items may be light so the property of the whole may be totally different from the property of the individual items. So the specific exception policy. This is a very fallacious argument. Yes, I believe that the country should be secular. But at parts, we should be giving way to individual religious freedom. Country should be having a civil code. But in part, exceptions should be made because there are individual rights. Where you believe a principle but want a specific exception for yourself or for the areas in which you believe there should be an exception leads to a fallacy. Often this leads to emotional arguments because the specific exception many times will have differing opinions. So another fallacy called base case fallacy. If the base case is not calculated properly. Today we have so many COVID cases. Oh, India has the highest amount of death in the world. But if as a percentage of population, it is very, very low, then we will have to do the basis correctly. Similarly, when we are talking of exceptions, that India is an outlier in terms of death rates, then the base must be calculated properly as a defense. So I have given five or six important uh, fallacies. It leads to logical arguments becoming illogical. Let us be aware of them. This will make us embrace argument and debates in a, in a very healthy way or avoid them if we want to avoid them. Thank you very much.